Hello, YouTube, and welcome to Mr. Zero's Terror Ride, yet another episode of Stephen King's It Vlog. Usually, you spend your time reading the books, but now the books will read you. Yeah. Hi, folks. I'm Mr. Zero of Mr. Zero's Terror Ride, a 31-year-old man who collects scary toys Boo. which isn't so unusual nowadays so many of us adults are not ready to trade in adulthood yet we collect things that are for kids we collect toys and things like that which is a good segue into talking about this book it's about bridges if you've ever um, read anything about Stephen King talking about this book, um, the inspiration was the Billy Goat Scruff. Um, I guess he had his transmission had failed on him, and he had walked to a shop to go get it towed. And I guess he was crossing a bridge and was thinking about Billy Goat Scruff and what if there really was like a monster underneath the bridge that was terrorizing people? And that's where the idea came from. And he, even the idea of the story of them being kids and them being adults, it's all about bridges in that way, too. The abridging of becoming an adult. Um, I'm going to have to confess, though, I haven't been all gung-ho getting into this book since last reading. Um, I'm at the... I'm on part three of chapter... Well, you can't really say the chapter by number. It's chapter seven dam in the barrens this is talking about um things from um, um eddie's perspective eddie being the kid with the overbearing mother um who grows up to be a uh owner of a limo company in new york pretty darn successful one from the sounds of it and uh well it's supposed he's supposed to be successful but i was a uh, more successful than I've known people to own these kind of companies. It seems like it's a smaller company. And I've 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 worked for a rental car company and I have a little bit of knowledge of how things work in this. And um any rate I I just got past another hump that I forgot was a hump of mine, and that's the story of Mike going to the Kitchener Ironworks factory that had blown up and killed so many kids back in the early early 20th century. And um, he goes and he gets attacked by Pennywise in the form of a giant bird. And uh, it's a hump for me because, well, it's not a hump so much now, but it was a hump when I first tried reading it. Like maybe the first or second try in reading it, I couldn't get past couldn't get through the book very far and I, I had a problem with that part in particular because there was no reference I had seen um, most of the movie most of the childhood part of the movie and I had no reference for this they didn't have this story and it's just as well because the the whole bit with the spider at the end was so that just the technology at the time couldn't do the uh, monster justice and then you couldn't do the uh, ritual of the chewed or the chud or whatever because that would be hard to explain and on a TV miniseries and uh, so they just did the whole bit with the uh, giant spider that wasn't very well done so I can imagine if they were trying to do a giant bird it just wouldn't <laughs> come out right it would have looked silly and you would lose that horror element that's one thing I'll say about the movie is it's pretty consistent horror until you get to that anticlimactic spider ending. It's like, well, this doesn't really scare me. But um, Tim Curry as as Pennywise does an excellent job, and I would compare like movie wise, you got Freddy Krueger and Pennywise. You know, I've heard people sit there who would win in a fight. Freddy Krueger versus Pennywise. I even did a, a video about that. And um, Pennywise, hand, hands down, he's far too powerful of a creature. Uh, Freddy would li not last. Plus, they exist in different realms. Freddy's in the dream world, and Pennywise is in the real world. 
So there you go with that. But the other side is Freddy says some very he tells some very bad jokes, sometimes tasteless, just sometimes just they're really not funny, but you laugh because of the context. He's a ser he's this dream monster who's telling jokes and they're they come off as funny. Whereas Pennywise, there's that scene in the movie, Tim Curry's telling like old jokes and um you're not laughing. It's more creepy. It's, it's a creepy scene. A well done creepy scene, too. I've got a nice delay on my computer so I can watch myself drink a soda long after I've done it. Feels kind of like predeterminism. He's going to put down the soda now. Um, so I got. I, I had a hard time getting through that part because there was no reference for it. But now I, I love that section in the book simply because I love reading about the relationship between Mike and his dad. It's a, it sounds like a very genuine, loving, um, I'm your father and I'm guiding you kind of relationship. Um, and so few of the characters have decent relationships with their, with their fathers. Um, a lot of them are abusive or there's absentee fathers in it. I can't remember how Richie's dad is. I think Richie's dad was okay. But Bill's dad is neglectful. Um, uh, Beverly's dad is abusive. Ben and Eddie don't have fathers. Those kinds of stories. So it's, it's really nice to read this loving, um, heartwarming story about Mike and his dad. And his dad's kind of guiding him along to see Derry for what it's what it is, is what I feel he's doing. He's trying to he knows when he I think I think he kinda knew when he sent um Mike out to the ironworks. He knew something was gonna happen. And um I think he knows why to an extent what what was going to happen. Um but he felt that it was important that Mike go out there when he came back. He says, don't tell your mother about this. Um, and so now I'm on the chapter where they're building the bridge. Or not the bridge, the uh, dam, sorry. The dam, which is a back to the, you know, reference, in, reference to movies. I can, I, I can see the reference there. And I'm really glad to be back to this on this path makes it easy to go through and so I, I should zip through the next few pages and I'm excited I, it's, just, it's so funny because I really don't read a lot of, of, of fiction especially fiction like this I read a lot of more um, non-fiction books and um, while it's good to read them and it's educational and you're learning something you don't get excited about it like I can like I know what's coming up I know approximately what happens but it's still exciting to read and I'm just so excited to just tear through this book and devour it like a steak um, um, I'm planning on in the future on doing more videos come like talking about the movie and the book and uh, relationships and characters and their characters that I can identify with um, and uh, yeah. So until next time, I think I've got I, that's all I wanted to cover for today. I'll hopefully start making more videos soon for the nine people that may want to view it. And um I seriously I had a I didn't think to to keep track of her her name, but I I got a comment on my last video about someone wanting to read it after watching my video and um yeah, it's, it's time to pick it up again, you know. It's a fun book, and if you have the time to, to digest it, it's it's a good book to read. I, I really, like, once, you, once I get past that first hump, it's a lot easier to pedal through it. Like you're on silver. Hi-ho. Or hi-yo hi is how he writes it. Hi-ho away. 
I feel very sedate this on this episode, so I'm sorry if I'm making anyone fall asleep. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say for now. Just really excited to start getting into the swing of the book. More of the scary stuff keeps coming every time. There's a good scary chapter. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to mention though, as I did um, the lead in to uh, the chapter involving Mike is called "One of the Missing: A Tale of the Summer of '58." Starts off with this kid. Eddie Cochran, who has uh, ran away from home because his stepfather is abusive and violent, which is just um, part of Derry, is uh, very nasty people who just live there. And it's I, I think the, the the impression is is that maybe they're drawn to being live in Derry and never leave, or the atmosphere of Derry kind of condu- is very conducive to violence and bad nature. So, but at any rate, Eddie Cochran um, gets attacked by um, Pennywise in the form of the creature from the Black Lagoon. Gets his head ripped off, and Mike discovers, not the body, but he discovers the leavings of that encounter. And um, that had me scared. That had me a little creeped out. And... uh, I <laughs> had to walk through the house late at night, turning the lights on. A little creeped out, and my wife wasn't helping. Oh, were you scared? Pennywise is coming for you. Which didn't scare me, but made me irritated. Because it sometimes feels silly when you get scared of reading a book, even one as good as this one. Anyway, that's all I've got for tonight. Or now. And, uh,. Hopefully I'll get the inspiration to come and do another video. As I said, I, I want to do stuff like talking about the movie versus the book. Um, and talking about the different characters and what I think of them. So, see you later. And communication. Peace out.